Friends from Tel Aviv, the former British Army officer and now trustee of the UK Friends of the Association for the Wellbeing of Israeli Soldiers, Colonel Richard Kemp, and from Ramallah, Palestinian National Initiative leader Mustafa Barghouti. Thank you both for joining me. Let me start uh, with you, if I may, Mr. Barghouti. Uh, we've just had this news in. We've all just heard it of the deputy head of Hamas being killed in Beirut. Obviously, this is the leader of the group that killed Palestinians in the coup in Gaza in 2006 to 7, and, uh, of course, one of the people who planned the October the 7th massacre. What's your response to uh, his killing tonight? Well, if you allow me, and I hope you will accept that from me, I think your presentation is absolutely one-sided, totally biased to the Israeli side. You speak about the right of Israel to defend itself, but you don't mention the right of the Palestinian people to defend themselves. You fail to mention that Israel is the aggressor, which started this terrible occupation since 56 years. And Palestinians, as people under occupation, according to international law, have the right to defend themselves and to resist occupation. You've, you failed to mention that no less than 29,000 civilian Palestinians have been killed by Israeli no, bombardment. I mentioned that. I mentioned including, that. In, no, no, you mentioned as if they were killed on their own, not by Israeli bombardment. What should be clear here is that 29,000 Palestinians, if we include those under the rubble, have been killed by Israeli terrible airstrikes and artillery bombardment, including no less than 12,000 children. I've said so many times on so many programs, I am against the killing of any civilian, whether Palestinian or Israel. But if you speak about the killing of 30 Israeli children, you should also speak about the 12,000 Palestinian children who were killed. Well, Mr. Barghouti, I did Mr. Barghouti, of I, Mr. I'll do a follow-up, I may. Uh, I did mention the killing of children. I did say that that is appalling but damage in the war. But let me, let me finish the question before you try to answer a question I haven't yet asked. Please. You said that the Palestinian Please. people are allowed to uh, resist, as you call it. What, what does that look like, in your view? According to international law, people who are under occupation have the right to resist in all forms, including military forms, as long as they respect international law and international humanitarian law. Okay, so, so what does it look like? What does it look like? Israel, Israel wants not only to... Look, I've been struggling with nonviolent resistance all my life. I was injured nine times by the Israeli army, although I never used any weapon. I was shot. I was shot twice. But... But you're in not telling shoulder, me. But you're not telling Israeli, me, sir. Wait a minute. You're not Israeli telling me what soldier, legitimate resistance while, is. While legitimate resistance is all forms of resistance that respect international humanitarian law, which okay. means not attacking civilians, not attacking children. It's very clear. That's what international law says. I am not creating that. Okay. But even Let when I was in my white coat, wait a minute. When I was in my white coat, in treating an injured person. An Israeli sniper shot me twice. The same same mentality of these snipers killed Shirin Abu Akhli, your colleague, the journalist, and nobody, no Israeli was indicted. 303 of my, of my colleagues, doctors, nurses, health professionals, have been killed by Israeli airstrikes in Gaza. 104 ambulances were destroyed. All our health centers were destroyed. This is not acceptable. OK, thank you, Mr. Barghouti. You, you, Mr. Barghouti, we have another guest, so I'd like to go over to Tel Aviv to Colonel Richard Kemp. What do you make of what you've just heard? Well, I think um, Mr. Barghouti talks about uh, legitimate resistance adhering to the laws of war. Uh, well, first of all, resistance to what? The, the Israelis withdrew from Gaza in 2005. Uh, and, and set effect, effectively set up a two-state solution. Uh, let, let the uh, Palestinian Authority, which was then taken over by Hamas, run their own territory. So what are they actually resisting? What's this resistance about? And when it comes to the laws of war, the people, the Hamas butchers that Mr. Barghouti has been quoted as referring to as our brave fighters, they went into Israeli territory on the 7th of October. They raped, burnt alive, butchered, cut off their heads, kidnapped, abused civilians and soldiers, civilians, though, which is, you know, against... Obviously, it's against any law of war. It was against the laws of war to kill anyone inside another country, but in, in that way. But, but to, do, to, to, to butcher civilians like that, what, what, where's the laws of war there? And secondly, ever since that day, and, of course, many, many times before, 
his brave Hamas fighters, as he calls them, have been firing rockets indiscriminately at civilian populations inside Israel, and they're still doing so. Uh, they won't be doing so much longer because they're about to be throttled by the IDF. And not only that, but they've also been firing them from within the civilian population. That is against the laws of armed conflict and preventing the civilians from leaving the combat areas when the IDF are trying to warn them about attacks, again, against the laws of armed conflict. They've also fired many of their rockets into the Gaza civilian population. We just have to look at the uh, Al Ali hospital attack that was attributed to the IDF, but turned out to be an Islamic Jihad, another brave Islamic Jihad fighters, firing their own rockets into their own civilian population. Let's not forget what Hamas is all about here. The, the reason Hamas launched this attack, there are strategic reasons, of course, but the, the overriding reason they launched this attack on the 7th of October and the reason they launched all of their attacks is to force Israel to defend itself from these attacks, which any country and every country would do and has the right and the obligation to do. And in, in carrying out its uh, reaction to these attacks, Israel, unfortunately, has no choice but to, to kill innocent civilians in the process despite the efforts they take, which are enormous, to avoid doing that. But that's what Hamas wants. Hamas, they don't, they don't just want civilians to protect their terrorists. They want Israel to kill civilians. So that Israel is then condemned, delegitimized, vilified, isolated around the world. And it happens, works every time in the United Nations, in the universities, uh, in, in some governments, human rights groups, always condemn Israel. That's what Hamas wants. And that encourages Hamas to do it again and again and again. But and by Mr. Barghouti, who, who claims to support peaceful resistance, by Mr. Barghouti justifying what they do, he also has blood on his hands from uh, encouraging I think, uh, I think you are absolutely uh, biased. Mr. Barghouti, you're going to get a moment to respond to that. I, I just want to ask you first, let's just clear that, this up before you do respond to Colonel Kemp. Uh, did you call Hamas our brave fighters or not? I never said that, no. It's, it's I don't know where true, you got it? that from. Well, no, it's not true. They, 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 you are putting words in my mouth. But let me let me respond to what the colonel said. The colonel is, said, uh, is reflecting uh, clearly a very clear white supremacy approach. It is OK why to kill Palestinians. Why is it white supremacy, civilians. Mr. Why Barghouti? Don't you say, why, don't you say, why don't you say clearly that you are supporting the killing of Palestinian children? Why don't you say clearly that you are supporting the killing of Palestinian civilians? Why don't you say that you are supporting Israeli occupation of Palestinian land and supporting three terrible war crimes? Even the American public is against that. Three war crimes, the war crime of genocide, which the International Court of Justice is looking into now, the war crime of collective punishment, and the war crime of ethnic cleansing. 90, wait a minute, 90% 90 of the Palestinian people were evicted from their homes. What would you have said if Palestinians evicted Israelis from their homes? Well, well, well they would have that done, be course. acceptable? But Mr. Barghouti, they have done, Why of course. Why don't you use but, the same but, standard I'm going to go back to, discuss I'm going to go back to Colonel Israelis. Kemp in a moment, but why, why, is, why is this white supremacy? Where did that come from? The Israeli public are not all white. Because and... I, don't, I think you don't see us white enough. And you are against anybody who is not white. And that's why you justify terrible atrocities that Israel is committing. And you are justifying right. not only the fact that Israel is occupying us, but the fact that Israel conducted the worst kind of ethnic cleansing in 1948, forcing 70% of the Palestinian people okay, out I'm of the land. I'm going to go back to Colonel These Kemp. These are now. the facts. I'll just go back to Colonel Kemp quickly. Uh, Colonel Kemp, uh, you, you said that, he, that Mr. Barghouti said our brave fighters uh, were Hamas. He says he didn't say that. Um, who's right? Well, I certainly read him quote. He may not have said it, but I read him being quoted as saying, I think it was Middle East Eye or something like that. But he can certainly, if he'd like to Google it to see what he actually said, he can find that and, on the internet. And what do you make of Sorry. this claim? And what do you make of this uh, claim, Colonel Kemp, that uh, everyone who uh, justifies or is in any way on the side of Israel during this war is a, is a white supremacist? Because Israel doesn't look like a very all white country to me, but I don't know. No, I mean, the, you know, there's. <laughs> There are all blends of um, races in Israel. And one thing we should remember as well is that there is a significant Muslim Arab population in Israel. And one thing that I've observed uh, in recent weeks is a, a, a skyrocketing, a skyrocketing 
of support for Israel among the Israeli Arab Muslim population. The, the poll, polls, a number of polls have shown that a huge gro growth of support for Israel, a greater association with the state of Israel since the 7th of October. And that is partly due to the fact that Hamas, his, his brave fighters from Hamas, that, that he clearly supports, came in and, um, and butchered not just uh, Israelis, but the, uh, Israeli Jews, but they also came and, and killed a number of Arabs and, and, and people from many different ethnicities. So what he's talking about, I think it's a great throwaway line, white supremacy. It obviously gets, you know, it's one of these intersectional terms, you know, me too and all this sort of stuff. It's, it's, it, it, he obviously thinks that's going to garner support for him for people who, uh, you know, do object, rightly object to the idea of white supremacy. But I don't think that comes into this argument one little bit. Uh, Mr. Bargudi, finally, we've only got a few seconds, but you said uh, we need to go back to 1947 and 1948. W what do you say to the people who say you can go back thousands of years and you never, never have an end to this argument? Well, look, Palestinians were displaced from their country, including cities like Jaffa, where my father lived, and Haifa and Akka, 75 years ago. If Israel is after 3,000 years, have the right to go back and demand to be in Palestine, then why not Palestinians who have been evicted 75 years ago? Why should we forget about our own country? And let's go back to the United Nations resolution that established the state of Israel. It said that there should be two states, yes. Israel and Palestine. Israel was created and Palestine was occupied. Yes, that well, is well, the reality. As we all know, exists. Mr. Barghouti, there's one thing we can be sure about about that. That's highly disputed history, as it all is. There wasn't a Palestinian state then. There could have been. Well, it's the in United view, Nations resolution. It's, uh, it's a very sad thing. There wasn't a Palestinian state created then, and that the Palestinians. It will be. Uh, it will be. Well, I assure well, you. A lot of people hope it will be, but uh, if it certainly we'll won't see. be if people are praising Hamas and. Uh, the longer they're around, the less likely it is there will ever be a Palestinian state, as far as I can see. But thank you very much, Colonel Richard Kemp in Tel Aviv, and thank you uh, to Mustafa Barghouti, our intersectionalist tonight in Ramallah.